Hey guys, welcome back to the Turbo V6 YouTube channel. We're gonna head up the dyno and see how much power we can make with the new intake manifold. I've been wanting to do this for a while and it's finally the day. I'm excited, I hope you are too. So hopefully we can get there, get this thing strapped down and find out how much power we're gonna pick up with this new intake manifold. If you haven't already watched the videos on me making this, it is an Edelbrock uh, Vortec V8 uh, aluminum high-rise intake manifold that I cut in half and re-welded back together to fit on my Vortec 4.3 liter V6 engine. We're gonna head up to the dyno. The last time it was on the dyno, I had a marine intake manifold. I wound up being able to make around 360 wheel horsepower at roughly like 14 pounds of boost, maybe like 14 and a half pounds of boost. I really didn't push the boost up. I was really playing with uh, the ignition timing and the air fuels. I was really keeping the boost constant, but in this episode, I think I might wind up turning the boost up just a little bit more to see how much power it picks up. So if you didn't watch any of my previous videos, make sure you go back and watch how I was able to make this Vortec V8 intake fit the V6. It was a lot of work, but I'm really hoping that it winds up picking up power. So this engine from basically valve covers to oil pan is 100% stock. I haven't modified the valve springs. I haven't put any different pistons in it. It's still the stock crank, the stock rods, the stock camshaft, completely factory. So nothing has been modified with the engine. Just really a turbo kit has been added and this intake manifold. Yeah, we'll see what kind of power it makes. And uh, yeah, go from there. All right, we made it. We're here on the dyno, got it strapped down. Got to swap out uh, my velocity stack for the headlight. And then see what this thing puts down. My battery is low, so I'm not sure how many pulls I'm gonna wind up getting, but I'll go update you guys. Um, maybe after a couple pulls, see what this thing is running. Try and get the boost the same as uh, what I was running uh the previous time and then maybe turn it up some so stay tuned was not high enough so I'm gonna have to turn that up. Let me let's see what two percent duty does. What's that? Two percent higher duty cycle. So I'm going up 8% duty cycle. That was about uh, 14, creeping up to 15 pounds of boost. So yeah, I wanna see if we can get closer to like 18, 19 pounds of boost and see what happens. Uh, if not, I might uh, also tweak their fuels the next run if this one you know, doesn't show signs of picking up power.
so far. Made 378, 399 foot pounds of torque. Not too bad. I'm gonna turn the boost up just to crack that 400 mark. You know, stock motor life, so gotta try and keep it alive. some numbers and do a recap so one second we'll see you at home well, this guy's looking a little ominous on my way home so uh, yeah it looks like we're gonna be stuck in some rain and yet another test for drag week it is raining so that's great the worst part about being in the rain in this truck is uh, you can't open the windows yeah otherwise it'll just uh, drip all over so, I'm just gonna sweat my butt off. All right, so we're back from the dyno. Everything went pretty good. Couple minor issues. Initially, in the first couple pulls, I was really just trying to get the boost dialed in to where I had it set at on my previous dyno session, which was a couple years ago. So the only things that have changed since then 
where I put a different converter in, so the converter is a little bit tighter, and then uh, the rear tires. So I had another set of tires that were smaller that um, potentially could have affected these numbers. So it's not an exact, you know, A to B comparison. There were a couple minor changes other than what I was trying to test. It, it still should be able to be fairly comparable just because there's not that many that, things that changed. And I think the changes that we did make were pretty minor. Ultimately, it seems like the intake manifold really didn't make a huge improvement. Uh, before I was running around 360 horsepower at 14 pounds of boost. It seems like we were just under that at around 340 to 350 range during this dyno session. The only thing that I can think of is that the current camshaft, the stock camshaft, is limiting this motor to the point where the extra airflow offered by the intake manifold isn't being utilized. So um, even the old marine intake manifold was providing enough air that the camshaft was still the limiting factor. The, the, you know, the old intake manifold flowed enough that it wasn't causing a restriction. So after I was kind of disappointed that the intake manifold wasn't showing the gains that I really wanted, I wanted to see a bigger number anyway. So I wound up cranking the boost up to the point where I've run it higher at the track, but I've never run it on the dyno at, at this level. So the final boost numbers were roughly around like 19 pounds of boost. And I wound up getting just over 400 horsepower. So I had a run in there where uh, the boost controller that I had wound up cutting boost and the boost dropped, but I still hit like 403 horsepower at like uh, 4,000 something RPM. And then I backed that up again with a 401 horsepower run. So at roughly 19 pounds of boost, this thing is making 400 horsepower to the wheels with a stock motor. So I think that's pretty impressive. It's difficult because there's not a whole lot of people doing it, but I think that this is a fairly reliable, safe level. Um, if you compare it to an LS motor, you know, an eight cylinder, you know, with, you know, gen three rods, these are, these rods probably are maybe slightly weaker even than gen three rods. But if you compare a gen three rod motor, you know, they can make maybe like 800 horsepower to the tire on an LS and a Gen 3 rod, well, this thing is making 400 to the tire. So it's it shouldn't be, you know, at the same level yet as a Gen 3, because if you're making 800, I should be able to make 600 with a six cylinder, you know, three quarters of that horsepower that an LS is making on the stock rods. So yeah, now that I have uh, kind of gotten the tune a little bit closer, I think um, more comfortable going back to the track and working on my 60 foot. In you know that last video, I was really not happy with any of those 60 foots, but you know getting a 60 foot dialed in is difficult. Not only because this thing is just being a you know foot braked. Um, I don't have a trans brake, um, so that complicates things. As well as you know, it's a test in tune night. I'm just trying to get as many runs as I can get the thing dialed in while also having to tune uh, fueling changes because of the intake manifold change. So now that I've gotten a bunch of passes under my belt, I think I'm ready to head back out and see if we can run another 10. So stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below what you think, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Later.